Um, my little workshop is this. Um, the idea behind practicing uh, for most people, in my opinion, is that most people are practicing incorrectly. You sort of pick up your guitar and you start playing pieces, and that's wrong. And if you, if you think about it, that you know that that's true. You know you should be doing some kind of technique, but what should you do? The idea here is that if I give you four things to work on, four categories to work on, you should just pick up the guitar, walk through those categories, don't think, don't, you don't have to think, but that should uh, suffice for your sort of workout for the day. And I think that's the key. Try not to think about what categories you have to do. So the first category is called open strings, and it goes like this. You're just literally playing open strings. Play with me on the second string, OK? Now it's very gentle. It's very soft. The focus here is on your breathing. It's on your breathing because this idea came from the, the concept of long tones. And I don't know, have you heard of this concept as long tones? Singers do it all the time and wind players do it all the time. So you can imagine a singer just holding a long tone, or a brass player or a wind player just holding a steady long tone. And the idea is to develop a steady stream of air going through the instrument so that they have good control of their airflow and good, control over, good basic control over their instrument. For us, the long tone is playing open strings. So my recommendation is um, practice this for five minutes. Pick your pair of right hand fingers like IM or MA or IA and really just time yourself doing it for five minutes. Focus on your breathing and focus on the lightness of the stroke. Focus on the consistency of the stroke and don't try to <laughs> bang out notes. Just sort of last it five minutes. Feel like you could go for 10 minutes because it should be very, very simple. The next category is left hand exercise. Left hand exercise in its most basic form comprises of these pairs. One, two, as I walk across the strings. I would do this at 4 o'clock in the morning when I was in college for about an hour. So I'm doing the one-two pairs. I think a lot of you can sort of catch on. The idea is that I'm walking through the strings very slowly again. And altogether, there are six pairs. There's one-two, there's one-three, and then one-four. Two-three, then two-four, then three-four. There are only six possible pairs in the left hand. And each day, pick one pair and just walk through it very gently. Once you've done that for five minutes, you move on to your right hand, right hand exercises. Right hand exercises, if you heard, have heard of the Giuliani 120 exercises, pick one or two and do that for five minutes. That's it. Again, it's not about trying to be complicated or fancy. It's just about very simple and very methodic going through each category. Finally, the scales. The scales can be as simple as something chromatic and very slow, very gentle. Can some of you follow along? I'm on the second string. I'm just playing the first four frets. Now I know for you it's way too easy, okay? So, you would practice with your pinky. Pinky. For, every other, for all the other mortals, you would play I am, I a. Right. Do you practice scales, by the way? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Anyone trying the pinky? Right hand pinky? Right hand pinky? Right hand pinky? <laughs> the pinky is important because your hand is only as strong as the weakest finger, as the weakest link, yeah? Also, I use the pinky for playing harmonics, so if I'm playing right hand harmonics with my pinky, it follows that I should practice my scales with my pinky, right? Now, the next category uh, is music. Music is music. I've waited it so that it's 20 minutes. If you only have 30 minutes a day to practice, you should be doing 20 minutes of this kind of technique, very long warm up, and 10 minutes of music. If you only have 30 minutes a day to practice, that's if you have 30 minutes. If you have more time, then you can dedicate that time to music. It should be weighted, uh, for the most part, on technique, because every note you play on the instrument involves one of these four categories. So. That's, that's sort of, um, no. Now, the way you're supposed to use this grid is if you did it on a particular day, you do a check mark and that's it, you're done. Um, I, I'm testing it with a lot of my students right now. I'm also testing it with my students at San Jose State. And by and large, it's been very successful because the amount of time that students are engaged on the instrument um, because of how dumb and how easy this method is, has gone up. And you, can, you see the improvement. It's really simple. They practice, they, they spend more time with the instrument so they improve more. It's really that easy, right? And I think the crucial point is take the thinking out of it. 
Um, it's a lot like a, there's a gym trainer. He said, when you get to the gym, all you have to do is go to the gym and then the trainer will take you through the exercises. You don't have to go like, oh, should I do my legs? Should I do my arms? Should I do my core? The, the, gym ha the, the trainer has a, has a program and you just show up. And so your job is to just show up with the instrument. So that's, do you have any questions about that? Yeah. It should be very simple. It shouldn't, people try to overcomplicate things. You know there's, a, there's an etude by Carcassi that you can do. You know there's an etude by blah, blah, blah you can do. You know Brouwer has 30 etudes that, you know, yeah, those are nice. Those are all really good. And I recommend all of them. But I went to college for this. I practiced for 8 or 10 hours a day. That's why I got through all of this. Most people don't. You have 30 minutes, if you have 30 minutes. So you should be practicing your technique. You should be eating your vegetables. So there you go. All right.